So I've been wanting to do another comparison video for a long time, and since I switched from Manjaro to OpenSUSE, I figured that comparing the two would be a pretty good idea for a video. Now I recently switched from Manjaro to OpenSUSE Leap, which is not a rolling distro. In this video, we're gonna be taking a look at OpenSUSE's rolling distro called OpenSUSE Tumbleweed. Specifically in this video, we're gonna be looking at the KDE editions of both distros. This comparison is going to be less about the distros themselves and more about the desktops and the utilities and tools and stuff that they provide. And because I hate making long videos, let's just go ahead and dive right in and point out the fact that Manjaro is a downstream distro from Arch. It is based on Arch, whereas OpenSUSE is OpenSUSE. It is the OpenSUSE distro. Now, an interesting thing about the two distros is that they both have a system administration tool. OpenSUSE has the mighty YAST, and Manjaro has the Manjaro Settings Manager. Both tools allow you to do things like view and update your hardware configuration, check on and update your date time configuration, along with sundry things like keyboard settings, locale settings, language packages, things like that. Now given that Yast is an enterprise tool, there is a ton of stuff that you can do with it. The Manjaro Settings Manager is much more limited in scope. However, there's a number of things that you can do with the Manjaro Settings Manager that you can't directly do with Yast. For example, on Manjaro, you can lock your kernel version using the Settings Manager. Now, obviously, you can lock your kernel version on OpenSUSE by going to the software management and then marking the kernel as taboo so it can't change. On Manjaro, you can also upgrade your NVIDIA drivers straight from here, but you can do pretty much the same thing with Yast once you enable the NVIDIA repo. So both tools are really handy, but the Manjaro Settings Manager is much more focused for a desktop user's perspective, whereas Yast is really handy for power users and folks like system administrators. Next, we're going to talk about disk usage and partition layouts. Manjaro by default uses a very simple partition layout with one single ext4 partition with everything stuffed underneath that. After a fresh install and all the updates, Manjaro uses about 7 gigabytes of disk space. OpenSUSE on the other hand uses a rather unconventional partition setup where XFS is the home partition and BTRFS is the root partition. The size of these partitions combined after a fresh install with the updates is about 5.5 gigabytes. So TLDR? OpenSUSE after a fresh install and updates is smaller than a Manjaro install. Now to look at the actual partition layout, we can use the partitioner built into YAST and we can see graphs and all sorts of cool stuff. On Manjaro, the default option is KDE partitioner, which really isn't that great. But as you can see, there is literally one ext4 partition and the Linux swap. Now given that both these distros are rolling releases, an interesting thing to look at would be the versions of the software. So taking a look at KInfo Center, you'll see that the KDE stack is the exact same version. 5.13.4 at the time of this video, even the cute version is the same. Interestingly enough, Tumbleweed actually has a newer default kernel version. Now obviously you can update the kernel version with Manjaro, but I think that the reason why they're using 4.14 is because that's the LTS version of the kernel. Now looking at the OpenGL stack, you'll see that Manjaro has a slightly newer version with Mesa 18.1.5, whereas OpenSUSE has 18.1.4. Probably won't see much of a difference between the two, but everything else here is the same. The X server is virtually the same between the two distros, however, the vendor release number is later on OpenSUSE. That doesn't necessarily mean that it's a newer version, however, it is different. Now this wouldn't be much of a distro video without some sort of overview of the standard and default applications and toolbar layouts and things like that, so let's go ahead and dive in. OpenSUSE's desktop has some icons sitting on it. The taskbar is very traditional. It's relatively small and there's not a whole lot of noise happening in there. You've got a limited number of icons in the system tray, and there's a desktop switcher on the left-hand side. Manjaro, on the other hand, has no icons on the desktop, but it's got a party going on in the taskbar. There's a few extra items hidden in the system tray, and there's two quick launchers, one for a folder and to show the desktop. On the left-hand side, you have two more quick launchers for Firefox and another folder, and just like OpenSUSE, there's a desktop switcher. Now, OpenSUSE uses the simple application menu launcher, whereas Manjaro uses the full-blown application launcher, which has a lot more going on in there. Both distros have a variety of standard applications, I think most users will be able to get running right out of the box with these. However, Manjaro packs a hell of a lot more than OpenSUSE. For example, Manjaro has two different office suites. It's got Steam installed out of the box. It's got two different versions of the Qt interface designer. It's got Skype installed out of the box. It even has the SUSE image writer out of the box, which is a little bit odd, but okay. 
OpenSUSE is much more modest in the software selection. It's got a couple of KDE games installed out the box, but no Steam. It has a single Office suite, and that's LibreOffice. It also comes installed with Kmail and the Kcontact suite of tools. Of course, OpenSUSE has Yast, which is considered a general settings tool. So rather than going through each and every installed application, I'll just say that Manjaro installs a whole hell of a lot more out of the box, including duplicates and multiple choices for various applications. Tumbleweed is much more modest in what it installs, but that also means that the user will probably have to install stuff as they need it. Now the final segment in this video is going to be system resource usage. Now a bit of trivia, I initially wanted this video to be only system resource usage, but I figure if I'm going to be comparing the two distros, I might as well cover a whole bunch of stuff. So I've saved the, in my opinion, best and most interesting part for last. Now I'll give you a quick TLDR, Manjaro uses slightly less resources on average than OpenSUSE. Now keep in mind for each clip here, I rebooted the VM so it's like a fresh boot so there's no other applications or anything else running. OpenSUSE has 188 processes running, which is more than Manjaro. However, I'm fairly certain that most of those processes are various utilities for the BTRFS file system. OpenSUSE also enables a number of utilities by default, including a firewall, which Manjaro does not turn on by default. And BTRFS allows for snapshots, so you can take snapshots of your file system. I believe that there needs to be services or something running for that. So I think that helps explain why there's more processes and why OpenSUSE consumes slightly more memory. But yeah, Manjaro uses about 560 megabytes after boot up at idle, whereas Tumbleweed uses about 630 megabytes after boot up at idle. The CPU usage was about the same, though it seemed like Manjaro was using more for whatever reason. That's probably just a general variance though. Now as we get to the end of this video, I want to point out that the purpose of this video was not to say one distro is better than the other. KDE has a reputation for being a resource hog, however on both Manjaro and OpenSUSE, we're looking at sub 700 megabyte memory usage. That's actually pretty crazy. But no matter which metric you look at, if you want a rolling release, Manjaro is good, Tumbleweed is good. You win with either distro, so it's up to you. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you did, be sure to leave a like, comment, subscribe, and if you want to support the channel more than just leaving a like or comment, you can go to Patreon and become a backer there. I appreciate everybody's support, and thanks for watching.